Welcome back to the Incurable Collector. This Mitchell VistaVision camera was designed in 1954 by Paramount. It eventually failed, but it did find life as a special effects camera. In fact, it was used for sequences in George Lucas's film, The Empire Strikes Back, otherwise known as Star Wars Episode V. Our next incurable is a mega fan of Star Wars. Over the last 25 years, he's assembled an extraordinary collection of memorabilia from the film series. With collector excitement like his still going strong and prices still rising, Star Wars is this week's hot collectible. Darth Vader, Yoda, Luke, Leia and Han, icons from a galaxy far, far away with escalating bounties on their heads. That would even turn the helmet of mercenary Boba Fett. The vast majority of collectors who are really into it now, particularly like the stuff that's a little pricier, they're people who grew up with it. So they're people like now, they think of all those toys they couldn't afford as a kid and now they can go back in and get them. Today, rare, hard to find Star Wars items are battled over in epic fashion. These limited edition lightsabers, which retailed for $250 just a few years ago, can now fetch as much as a thousand. This imposing Darth Vader figure will sell at shops for $4,500. And prototype packaged action figures like Lando Calrissian here can often trade for as much as 5,000. Seattle-based software development manager Gus Lopez says the fanaticism begins with fans who were drawn to a new kind of film a generation ago. I think people forget this now because so many blockbusters have copied it. It was really revolutionary at the time that somebody would go into this genre of film with the intensity and the expenditure that they did and, and just produce something so different than anybody had ever seen. I think it just really hit me at the time and then it just mapped over into collecting and that's kind of how I got going on it. And these guys have tons of Star Wars. Music. Look at this. What qualifies Gus to be our expert on this burgeoning area of fantasy collectibles? Just take a look around his 4,000 square foot tri-level home he shares with his wife, Pam. There's seven rooms that I have for Star Wars rooms, so we try to keep the living room, dining room, kitchen relatively normal, although it's all subjective. When people see big Darth Vader and big Anakin in the living room, I don't know if they think that's normal. Gus and Pam also share their digs with life-sized likenesses of Episode One characters Darth Maul, Wado, and Jar Jar. Gus's extensive collection, valued at well over $100,000, even extends to actual props used in the making of the Star Wars films. This is the original Death Star model from Star Wars. Um, actually, I have a photo of it here. This is with Dennis Muren next to the model. It's the only full 3D model that they made for the first movie. And if you put a light source inside, it lights up the surface, and it has a lot of detail. And it was actually painted by Ralph McQuarrie, who was a conceptual artist for Star Wars. How do you get started? When Gus began collecting seriously as a young adult, he discovered he already had a good beginning scattered around his parents' home. This is a, a complete set of the loose, vintage Star Wars action figures. The top half of this really consists of my childhood action figures. I saved all the ones I had starting in 1978 when they were released, and then I completed my set years later. This figure, for example, was exclusive to a Sears catalog mail-in, so that one is worth a little bit more. It can fetch $100, but most of them are in the vicinity of about $10 figure. Gus's next step, which worked phenomenally well for Star Wars, would also actually work for the genesis of any collection. I just took like a one-line ad in the Seattle Times and I said, give me a call if you have Star Wars. And I'd go over to people's houses and I'd look at what they have and I'd say, look, you know, price guide value, you know, I was willing to pay 40% of it by your whole collection. So if you tried to sell each individual action figure and toy, it'd take you probably years to find the right buyer who'll pay top dollar. And then what I do is I buy, buy these collections, keep a good chunk of it, sell the rest of it, make my money back, and then just keep doing this. And I just built up this massive collection just doing that. There was so much vintage Star Wars stuff around. Gus soon discovered that Star Wars collecting could take on some surprising forms. This is um, the cereal room, and this is probably the most comprehensive set of Star Wars cereal boxes anywhere. Many of these boxes are 20 years old, and you got to imagine how many people save a cereal box 20 years old. It's not that they're particularly valuable or anything. It's that was so challenging to try to put a set together. Another area Gus is always adding to is his Star Wars Celebrity Yearbook Collection. These can trade for as much as $600 a piece. So you have 
Carrie Fisher, and, and you can kind of see her in the lower right-hand corner of that yearbook. Harrison Ford, he's in Homeroom 173. George Lucas's high school yearbook, he's, he's right there. Gus advises novice collectors to be on the lookout for store promotions. This life-sized Luke Skywalker cutout came with a very appealing price tag. That's free, yeah. And, and what's great about this kind of thing is these actually end up going for some serious money years down the road, and, and you pick them up for nothing because they don't make that many store displays, and not many of them are saved. Collector, be warned. Serious collectors will travel to the ends of the earth, well, Tunisia at least, in search of elusive items left on location while shooting the first Star Wars. Pam and I bought plane tickets, just flew out to Tunisia and spent a few weeks just scouring the country. What I do is I go out there, show photos of Star Wars, and then you find the person who remembered the filming from 20 years ago, and they'd go run off, and the next day they'll come back with this really cool piece, and you give them not a lot of money, but like for them, like two months of wages or something to buy some really cool piece, and then they find more stuff for you, and, and so we found just incredible stuff. From the junkyards of Tunisia to the closeout bins at the local five and dime store, there are Star Wars collectibles in every price range for the buyer who has become smitten with the romance of this enduring intergalactic odyssey. I will frequently get people coming to me going, I want to buy the high-end things, I want to buy the really unusual stuff, and what I'll advise them is take your time, there is so much of that stuff out there, just find what you really love. Has Gus got you thinking about a Star Wars collection of your own? Here are our experts' top three picks for affordable ways to enter this growing galaxy. Number three, our experts say kids' Halloween costumes. Built for obsolescence, most of these flimsy jumpsuits and masks were tossed away after a single night of trick-or-treating. Originally selling for less than $5, these quick changes in a box can still be found at antique stores and online for between $10 and $20. Our number two pick, ceramic figures. Over the past 20 years, this R2-D2 bank has appreciated from $10 to about $50. And this 1977 Darth Vader mug by Rumpf can command, or should we say, demand a price of $75. The more unique the item, the greater the value. This C-3PO cookie jar currently can trade for between $250 and $350. Our number one pick, carded vintage Star Wars action figures. Ranges in price can be galaxies apart. This Princess Leia figure from The Empire Strikes Back can go for $100 in mint condition, while this Luke Skywalker, part of the first series of 12 Star Wars figures ever made, could be worth $400. A very rare figure, like this Power of the Force Anakin Skywalker, which was never released in the United States, can currently trade for $3,000 and up. For information on our experts' top ticks and more, visit our website at a and collector.